Good afternoon everyone, Pastor Andrew here, and well, as you notice, my appearance has changed a little bit since last week as I've decided to say bye-bye to the beard here, as the mask tends to fit a little better with that, so one of those small sacrifices to make here, but definitely does feel a lot, a lot cooler when out and about doing errands and essential activities during the week, so anyways, I hope you're having a good week so far. It was a nice holiday weekend, and it was nice to come away relaxed, renewed, and refreshed after having a couple extra days of little extended Sabbath. And so I hope everybody else was able to enjoy their holiday weekend last weekend. And now we're kind of getting into that, what we call the dog days of summer. So pretty much until the fall now, we're pretty much on autopilot. Maybe not quite. There's always still something going on here. I've learned that the last four years or so. So today for our daily word, I was going through my devotions on email. I subscribe to several email devotions, and I encourage everybody else to as well. So I have one from the Center for Action and Contemplation, and so I want to share with you a brief word from our scripture today. And so I want to, if you have your Bible handy, or if you have Bible Gateway on your tablet or your smartphone or internet browser, I invite you to go to Matthew 7, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 14, just a very short thing, and then I have a reflection by Father Richard Rohr from the Center for Action and Contemplation I'd like to share with you, because it's very relevant to what's happening right now, and it can be very relevant to our lives, especially in the time of rapid change. So let us hear these words from Matthew. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy, that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so from Sunday, as the Center for Action and Contemplation devotions usually start on Sunday and then go through Friday and then they have a summary on Saturday. The one from this past Sunday, July 5th, really caught my attention by Father Richard Rohr and it's called Change is an Inevitable. And so I want to share this with you from Father Rohr. The word change normally refers to new beginnings, but the mystery of transformation more often happens not when something new begins, but when something old falls apart. The pain of something old falling apart, chaos, invites the soul to listen at a deeper level, and sometimes forces the soul to go to a new place. Most of us would never go to new places in any other way. The mystics use many words to describe this chaos, fire, dark night, death, emptiness, abandonment, trial, the evil one. Whatever it is, it does not feel good, and it does not feel like God. We will normally do anything to keep the old from falling apart. Yet this is when we need the patience and guidance and the freedom to let go, instead of our tightening our controls and certitudes. Perhaps Jesus is describing just this phenomenon when he says it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Not accidentally, he mentions this narrow road after teaching the golden rule. He knows how much letting go it takes to treat others as you would like them to treat you. While change can force a transformation, spiritual transformation always includes a disconcerting reorientation. It can either help people to find new meaning or it can force people to close down and slowly turn bitter. The difference is determined precisely by the quality of our inner life, our practices, and our spirituality. Change happens, but transformation is always a process of letting go, living in the confusing, shadowy space for a while. Eventually we are spit up on a new and unexpected shore. You can see why Jonah in the belly of the whale is such an important symbol for many Jews and Christians. In moments of insecurity and crisis, shoulds and oughts don't really help. 
They just increase the shame, guilt, pressure, and likelihood of backsliding into unhealthy patterns. It's the deep yeses that carry us through to the other side. It's that deeper something we are strongly for, such as equality and dignity for all, that allows us to wait it out. It's someone whom, in whom we absolutely believe and to whom we commit. In plain language, love wins out over guilt any day. At the Center for Action and Contemplation, we are blessed with a core faculty that come from a wide variety of backgrounds and life experiences. We are from northern and southern states and midwest and the coast, celibate and married, male and female, black and white, Protestant and Catholic. Each of us speaks of our commitment to practices of spiritual transformation drawn from the Christian contemplative tradition. And so that's the gist of what the devotions are this week, is wisdom in the time of crisis. And today's was about how Job, well, how Job finally lost his cool and started lashing out at God. And then got quite a lengthy response from God, even though there's so much mystery. But, you know, it does, this week's devotion, today, or the Sunday's devotion, you know, change is really something that's been prevalent these last several months. I know that sweeping change is not fun. It brings us anxiety, depression. I know that I can speak for myself, that I've had many sleepless nights. I've probably stress-eaten a little more, although have finally gotten back into a regular pattern of working out and eating healthier, so which I'm wearing my workout gear because I've walked to the office today instead of driving, which is also good environmental stewardship since I'm not driving as much and saving a lot of money in gas. But either case, you know, change is something that does happen, and, you know, it's how we react to change. You know, are we going to embrace it, or are we going to turn inward and bitter about what was? You know, having grown up in the more traditional side of the church, I hear oftentimes about the good old days, or I hear about, well, back when, dot, dot, dot. And, you know, was it really that great? Or is it an illusion? And so that's where, I think, where Jesus is saying that, with the narrow gate there, that sometimes we got to go through that narrow gate, and it's hard. That's part of where Jesus said the way wasn't going to be easy. And so, you know, think about what it means to even love one another, even those that are bitter about things, or, you know, those that might not like us, or, you know, it's the golden rule. Treat everybody as you want to treat yourself to be treated. And so even in the light of rapid change, I think that we can still love each other. And, you know, that even, yes, like I say, wearing our mask and washing our hands is a way of loving one another, too. So, I'm starting to get a little rambly here, so I'd like to invite you to join me for a word of prayer. Our loving and holy God, we thank you that you are with us even in times of disorientation, times of rapid change, and times of anxiety, times of having to embrace the unknown. Lord, we know that you are with us each step of the way. We know, though, that there are some times that we feel like you are silent. Yet we know that you will reveal yourself in a meaningful way on this journey. So, Lord, be with all of us this rest of this today and be with those who are Suffering from COVID-19, we give you thanks for those who have recovered from COVID-19. Continue to pray for our medical professionals and all of those who are out working in the path of this virus. And we pray, Lord, for our world, nation, state, and county leaders. And continue to pray for wisdom and guidance so that your will can be done here on earth. So, Lord, be with us throughout the day. Let us be guided by the Holy Spirit with the love of Christ in our hearts. And let us be your ambassadors here on earth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So I'll see you tomorrow around 2 o'clock for tomorrow's Daily Word. And we'll see what tomorrow brings. So I hope you have a great afternoon and wish you all peace and blessings.